What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're going to be talking about something that may be a little bit too early to talk about but we're going to be doing a banlist prediction video. Now if I'm being honest with you I don't think the banlist is going to come out till post the megatons which is like a month or a month and a half away from now but I still think this is really important to address because we know it's going to be coming out in Power of the Elements. We kind of know where the format is headed so for that reason I think it's really important to address what needs to be addressed in today's format. Now, if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. If you guys wanna see deck profiles, combo videos, product openings, duels, all that good stuff, we upload five days a week here on Spanko. Also, if you guys wanna join the Slifer Slacker Squad, just hit that join button, it's right next to the subscribe button. You guys get early access to all my videos and you guys get some other perks as well, which is really, really neat. So if you guys wanna check that out, make sure to check out it helps support the channel. I don't wanna keep you guys waiting for too long though. So with that, let's get into the ban list prediction video. Now, just before we we get into this balance discussion i just want to say one thing and make one thing clear these cards and ideas that i have specifically towards cards that are going onto the ban list not necessarily cards coming off the ban list but cards going on the ban list i think it's very important to note that i'm really focused around a new format a new meta power of the elements is coming out and i'm gonna be honest with you i don't even see this ban list coming out until the megatons so i might be doing this prediction a little bit early but i do want to say that i think it's still really important because there are certain things that definitely need to be addressed and i think would just make the game overall a lot more healthy so with that being said, we're going to start off with the band section, okay? So we're going to start off with cards that need to go to zero because we don't want to see them anymore. And the very first card I think is a card that everyone is going to agree with me, and that is Artifact Scythe. Scythe needs to go. This card needs to be gone. I remember a couple formats ago, not even the current format that we're in, the one before this, people were saying Scythe needed to go. It didn't go. And to be honest, with the addition of Jet Synchron and just all the combo decks that are relevant right now, like Punk, this card is just so easy to make and every deck can pretty much make a Scythe lock on top of a Baron. The thing is, all these Scythe decks are not just ending on Scythe. They're making Scythe and then using the TG Wonder Magician to make a Baron the floor. So I think Scythe just needs to go because without this card, none of those crazy combos can happen. Now, yes, there are decks like Punk that can still do other combos, so don't get me wrong. It's not like Scythe is going to kill certain decks, but the thing is, this is just such an oppressive card that I feel like it just needs to go. And honestly, I'm not going to explain it too much because I feel like everyone in the community who's watching this right now is probably in agreement with me. So the next card that I think needs to be banned is another card that's very similar to Scythe in a sense. It's used in a different deck, but it makes that deck just impossible to play against. And on top of that, I should say, I feel like cards that just lock your opponent from not being able to play special summon. For example, Vanity's Emptiness at zero. It's been at zero for a long time. So I think Scythe has to go because of that reason. But I think another card that pretty much does the same thing as Scythe, maybe even a little bit more oppressive because it doesn't really require that much of a setup. And that's Barrier Statue. I think it's of the Storm Winds. Yes, yeah, uh, the Wind one. Essentially, Flunderies are abusing this card. Every single turn, they're going to try to end on an Empin plus a Barrier Statue, essentially locking you out of special summon monster effects, as well as just special summoning monsters in general if they're not Wind. Now, this card, of course, has outs. People can play Forbidden Droplet. You can play Impermanence, Forbidden Chalice. There are ways to out this card don't get me wrong but it's still one of those really oppressive cards that makes a very i think fair deck if i'm being honest with you i think flunderies is a very fair deck but i think this card just makes it over the top broken because not only are you ending on your regular like really powerful board you're just being like okay you're not gonna be able to special summon now good luck so i think cards like this just shouldn't exist in general where it's like hey both this and scythe kind of do the same thing i can't special summon i can't really play i'm passing and you're gonna win the game it also makes it so that essentially i have to draw the out if i don't draw the out i lose and that's that's not really, I think, how Yu-Gi-Oh! should be played in today's format. So I think that's why this card needs to go. Now, the final card on my ban section, the very final card, I'm only putting three cards as banned. And I think before we even showed what this card is, it's a card that was featured in both the finalist decks in the main deck, by the way, in the 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh! Nationals. And that is, you guys guessed it, Mystic Mind. This card needs to go. It's been way too oppressive for way too long. Now, yes, there are formats where it's good and there are formats where it's bad. However, I will say the one thing about Mystic Mind is as soon as we saw the Nationals events, I think the YCS Hartford was the one before that, but both the YCS and a Nationals where Mystic Mind essentially just took over the entire room and took over the entire event. Like, think about it this way. The first place winner was playing Sword Soul and main deck three Mystic Mind. Now, something like Sky Striker, which Ryan, you played, is kind of more understandable to play the Mystic Mind. However, 
you can literally just throw it in to Sword Soul, a deck that's never in history played Mystic Mind. And it was kind of like, well, Mystic Mind just makes it so that if I'm in a losing position, I'm actually not in a losing position anymore. So this card just needs to go. I think Mystic Mind is just one of those cards that's one, just super oppressive, but two, it makes it so that if people are main decking this, a lot of people aren't on back row hate. Now you might argue, well, now you're going to have to main deck back row hate and deck building is going to have to change. That's not really how the game works. Because if you think about it, you could argue the same thing with both the Scythe and the Barrier Statue. Well, just don't play decks that special summon, play True Draco. Like that's, that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh works, right? Cards are just really, really oppressive like these should not exist in general because it's like, as soon as I activate this, if this is resolving, the game's pretty much over or not necessarily over, but it's tilting in my favor where now I can just wait until I get the cards in my hand that I need to break your board and I'm just winning the game. I'm pretty sure someone decked out in one of the feature matches at Nationals as well. I, I might be mistaken there, but I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere where someone either decked out or something like that just because Mystic Mind was on the board and every single turn was just pass, 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 right? And that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh should be played. It's very uninteractive and I think Mystic Mind just needs to go. Like, I, I don't know why I'm explaining myself so much with this card i feel like you guys are all in agreement with me on this because i feel like there's no logical reason for this card to still be around now i've talked to some people and some people again said oh but this card is not really good into some formats like it's really good in some formats but it's not in others okay true but if you look at the ban list half of the cards on the ban list you could argue the same thing i don't think it's about whether cards are relevant in every single format i think it's about cards that when they are relevant are absolutely busted and just break the game so yeah i've always hated mystic mind i've always said this card needs to go but i will say as soon as I saw it in Sword Soul in the main deck in the finals and Sword Soul 1, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this. This card needs to definitely go now. So that's it for the ban section. We're just going to keep it at three cards. I think this is all that needs to be banned. The thing that I was doing when I was putting together this ban list was keeping next format in mind. And I was thinking, okay, Konami might want to transition from the decks that we're playing in this format to the decks that we're going to play in next format, this being Sprite, Tier Element, and whatnot. So I think the next cards you guys are going to see are more focused towards certain decks, whereas these three cards that are banned are just more towards just broken cards cards that need to go. All right, so let's get into the limited section. I only actually have one card going to one and you guys are going to think it's funny, but I actually really think this card needs to go. And that is emergency teleport. Emergency teleport, I think needs to go back to one. It was at one for a while, went to three when the punk stuff was getting released. I guess it was Konami's way of pushing punk. However, what's happened is Itali's just become way too broken because it's made the punk stuff that shouldn't otherwise be good with the adventure package become good with the adventure package. Because now it's like, hey, I have my right of arm easier, but it doesn't matter because I can just eat my Ziamen and now I still have full combo. So earlier I said how Scythe doesn't really necessarily hurt the punk deck. This is kind of like a way to actually hit the punk deck. With Itali now at one, it makes it so that I think the deck building becomes a little bit more complicated. You can't just say, I'm going to activate Rite of Armesier, I'm going to do a whole adventure play, and then I'm going to Itali my Ziamen and I'm still going to have full combo on you. So that's why I think Itali needs to go back to one. It's the only card that I have at the limited section. I don't think anything else needs to go to one. It doesn't really make sense. I was talking to some people and some people were like, totally awesome needs to go to one or Winda needs to go to one Winda might need to get banned because tier elements and tier elements can abuse those cards i understand all that logic behind it but while i agree with some of those statements like toad being gone or Winda being gone so that sprite and tier element can't abuse it i don't think konami would do something like that because at the end of the day what do they want to do they want to push these new decks and the only way to push these new decks is to make them meta relevant and competitive so if you just start hitting these new decks even if they've already been out let's say this ban list comes out post the megatons right and power of the elements has been out for a full month at that point. I still don't think it matters because it's like, okay, well, people are just going to transition back to the old decks because now the new decks that do really cool things can't do those things anymore. So that's why I don't agree with hitting Toad or Winda. Now, don't get me wrong. In the future, I definitely think those cards should get hit. But I think just for today's format, Itali going to one, what it does is it pushes these new decks and it makes it so that people can't just go back to playing Punk Adventure or Punk Theory on anymore. Now, usually I actually skip over the semi-limited list because I don't like semi-limited stuff. I don't think it makes sense to be honest with you however i think konami's might do something very very spicy with this ban list and you guys are not going to see it coming i'm not even going to see it coming but i'm just going to say this now because if it does happen then i'm kind of a genius and what i think is actually going to happen is something that konami did in master duel that they might actually do here in the tcg can you guess what that is i think right of armies here as well as Water Enchantress 
are both gonna go to semi-limited status now there this is weird right it's not something that you would expect or hear someone say however the reason i think this is gonna happen and i know you guys are gonna call me crazy but just listen hear me out right the reason i think this is gonna happen is because one they did it in master duel now you could argue they did it in master duel because they wanted to balance the format blah 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 but i think if they want to do the same thing with the tcg where they want to make the new decks relevant and they want to push like newer stuff and slowly phase out the older decks i think what they need to do is they need to hurt some of these packages that these older decks are playing if you think about all these pile decks they really do rely on this package so now what i think is going to happen is i think they're going to put right as well as water enchantress to two so it doesn't completely kill the engine it doesn't completely kill the package however what it does is it makes it so that this package isn't as prominent and in the upcoming format what ends up happening is you can't just slap adventure into every single deck and make that deck relevant right so that's kind of where i'm at with this this is one of those things where i think it would actually happen and if it did it wouldn't be that crazy however at the same time when you think about it it'd be like yo spanko why the heck would they do this to two I, I just think it's one of those things that they might do because it just pushes the next thing keep in mind that even if this comes out after the megatons after power of the elements we have i think the set's called darkwing blast the, the set after power of the elements that set is also going to be really really good and what ends up happening is why would people keep playing this engine from a year ago where we need to sell the new product so this is going to be a move that i think is going to be more about a business standpoint more than it is a tcg meta standpoint i think this is just more of like a hey we are konami we want to sell new new cards stop playing these old cards because we need you to play these new ones so this is i think going to be more of a hit that's going to be on a business thing not as a meta competitive thing okay so now we're in the unlimited section i'm not going to take as much time with this i think this section doesn't need as much explanation with some of the cards that i'm going to choose there's only really one card that i need to explain but the first few cards that i'm going to talk about here are trick star uh light stage I think light stage can come back to three now i mean it was at two and it really nothing happened right so it being at two and nothing really changed i think konami is going to be like okay this card can come back to three trickstar players can rejoice and have fun with this i don't think it's going to be meta competitive or meta relevant anyways especially with stuff like verte being gone uh, i think light stage coming back to three makes perfect sense and then another card that is currently at two but i think i can see it coming back to three again because they brought it to two last ban list and nothing happened in terms of meta and that is dynamite knight i think dynamite knight just makes sense to come back to three it's at two, True Draco's not doing anything. I don't think True Draco will do anything even with this card at three because without Diagram or Masterpiece, there's no real like win condition. There's no real boss monster for this deck. So I think both these cards that just came to two in last man list can come back to three now. And I don't think it really would do anything to change the game. However, the only card that I want to talk about and kind of explain a little bit more is Fusion Destiny. So Fusion Destiny went to two, not the last ban list, but a few ban lists ago. And I think the reason for this was kind of like, okay, well now you can't just draw into your Fusion Destiny and then you don't have to make Verte and you can do your full combo and at the end of the combo you can go fusion destiny right so that's kind of the reason i think it went to two but i think now that verte is gone i think it's just one of those cards especially because dpe is also not seeing that much play right now and they just released a starlight dpe keep that in mind they're just releasing a starlight dpe in power of the elements so for that reason and for all those reasons combined i feel like fusion destiny can just come back to three and it wouldn't be a big problem especially again the main point that i wanted to bring up is i think because verte is gone specifically fusion destiny to three does make a little bit more sense especially for hero players and also power of the elements is a hero based set for the most part i mean i know the meta decks aren't hero stuff but there's hero theming in it right dpe is getting a starlight like i said as well so i think fusion destiny coming back to three just makes a lot of sense but but that's really it for the ban list you guys saw the ban the limited the semi-limited and the unlimited it's not like a huge huge ban list that i'm putting together but i think it's just cards that make a lot of sense so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this is kind of where i think the ban list is going to go now i know the right of Armisier as well as as the water enchantress take might be a little bit out there but i really think from a business perspective it makes sense in konami's eyes however if you guys have any suggestions or have any ideas that you guys think should be on the ban list make sure to let me know in the comment section down below there's a lot of other cards that i could have included i wanted to talk about harp horror you know me i'm an orcus player i love orcus but i just didn't see it happening maxi is another one but there's no way maxi's coming back with sprite format because that would be just way too broken right so for all those reasons there are a lot of cards that i would have added but i chose not to because it just didn't make sense but if you guys have any ideas let me know in the comment section down below that's how we get ideas and build together as a community you know that's really, that's really important to me the spanko is is not a me it's i mean i guess i am spanko but spanko is a community in large so yeah i really want to know what you guys think thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy today's video i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace
Get up, get up.